Hey, what's going on guys? It's the Western Nomad here. I'm going to share some footage of what Crested Butte looks like driving through the town. Um, when I first saw this place, I was like, man, this is really green for Colorado. And driving in there, I almost was like, man, I feel like I'm almost in Montana. Just the way the uh, farmland was and all the cattle and the mountains, it it uh, didn't really look and feel like the normal mountain towns of Colorado. And perhaps that's why they call it the last great ski town, because it doesn't sit on the I-70 corridor like Vail and Breckenridge and Arapaho Base, Basin and uh, Copper Mountain. So this is a pretty rural town, but it is worth the drive. Um, I went through Buena Vista, and then some rural county roads and uh, ended up out here. So I was pretty surprised by how spread out Crested Butte was. Um, I thought it was going to be just like a small little mountain town. And in some ways it is, but when you're driving in there, and you'll see it later in the footage, um, there, there kind of is like the main downtown area and then all the hotels and resorts further up the mountain. So if you're staying at one of these hotels and you want to get down to the village for, you know, your meals, because that's really, you know, the only place there is to eat if you don't want to spend a fortune at your hotel with, with their dining, you know, that's, that's a good, <laughs> I'd say 25, 30 minute walk. So a lot of people are riding their bikes up and down. Um, there is a bus. There's like this <laughs> hippie uh, Crested Butte bus that got painted over with all this uh, cool looking 60s artwork that takes people from the hotels down into the town. Um, I forget the name of that bus, but um, really cool town. Plenty to do here. And it really does feel like you're you're in Switzerland or Montana and Colorado. It kind of like this one mountain town has combined the look and feel of many other places, in my opinion. Um, so enjoy the footage, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of this place as well. The East River Valley, where Crested Butte is located, was once used as a summer residence by the Ute people. However, they were quickly displaced when European Americans first entered the area. The first white people to explore the valley were beaver trappers, shortly followed by surveyors. Captain John Gunnison, after whom Gunnison County is named, was one of the early explorers to enter the area. In the 1860s and 1870s, coal and silver mines began to open in the surrounding area, and many little mining towns were formed. Mining along with ranching formed the nexus of the local economy. However, when silver mining began to decline, many of these towns failed. Crested Butte, however, was in a better position to, sur to survive because it served as, as a supply town to the surrounding area. When coal mines were closed, the town began to shrink and eventually the local high school was closed. Students had to travel to Gunnison to go to high school. The town did not revive until a ski area was built on Crested Butte Mountain in the 1960s. After graduating the class of 1965, the Crested Butte Public School only facilitated K-5 through students, while 6th grade and higher attended school in Gunnison. Placer miners were present in the area as early as the 1860s. In 1873, geologist Ferdinand V. Hayden was on an expedition surveying the Elk Mountains. From the top of what is today known as Teocalli Mountain, Hayden referred to present-day Crested Butte Mountain and Gothic Mountain as the Crested Buttes, which became the town's namesake. Howard F. Smith, the founding father of Crested Butte, laid out the town by 1878. While Smith was originally attracted to the area because of the uh, extensive coal deposits, which would eventually become 
the town's economic base, Crested Butte initially made its mark as a supply town for hard rock mining. The town of Crested Butte was incorporated July 3, 1880 with a population of about 400 people. In addition, around 1,000 miners resided in the surrounding areas. Smith served as the first mayor of Crested Butte and sold half of his interest in the town and 1,000 acres of local coal land to the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad in an effort to persuade the extension of the railroad from Gunnison to Crested Butte. Smith's tactics proved successful and the railroad arrived in Crested Butte on November 21, 1881. The arrival of the railroad ended Crested Butte's isolation and facilitated the expansion of the coal industry and the simultaneous expansion of the town. In 1882, Crested Butte was home to 1,000 people and had five hotels, a bank, several saloons and restaurants, three uh, livery stables, sawmills, doctors, lawyers, and the Union Con Congressional Church, which still stands today. Residents got their water from a large reservoir located above the town. The telegraph arrived in concert with the railroad in 1881, and in the 1880s, a telephone line connected Crested Butte and Gunnison. So, a lot of these small mountain towns, what's interesting <laughs> is they used to be a lot more lively and have a lot more going on than they do today. And this, of course, was because of the resources that were, you know, there in the mountains. So, uh, you know, I'm sure they have, uh, you know, a local hospital there for when people get banged up skiing, but... <laughs> It's just funny, you go to these small towns and uh, Victor is one of them where, you know, these were once one of the most populated towns, you know, in the entire state and country. But that just goes to show you, you know, people go where the money is. And uh, I guess that's, that hasn't changed today, just the location of where people gather resources has. So hope you enjoy that history lesson and uh, get to see what downtown Crescent Butte is like.